What do you got there, Daisy? Is that your taco? A lot of people probably don't know that you like tacos. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty interesting there. A dog that eats tacos. All right. Well, I'm sorry that you think these postcards are boring. And no, I don't have any Wonder Woman postcards for you to look at. Oh, hey, what's going on, everyone? Dominic, the primetime treasure hunter here. As you know, Pink Panther's job is to guard the postcards. And uh, we actually sold another one today for 10 bucks. So I'm going to show it to you in just a second. Pink Panther just uh, brought it up uh, right to the top. As you know, you stay put there. I don't want any more trouble from you. He actually fell off of the ledge a couple videos back. If you didn't see that, we had a near tragic accident here. And he was about to file a worker's comp claim on me. But as Thrifty Esme correctly pointed out, go check out her YouTube channel, by the way. Uh, he voided his claim in the next video because he was extending his neck over the ledge to check out the Wonder Woman print. So, you know, this is the type of stuff, remember this postcard uh, put up the other day that he thinks is is boring. So, uh, sorry, that's not Wonder Woman. So, uh, anyway, I also have uh, this one uh, up for sale right now. If you like dolls, this is a real creepy doll uh, postcard. So, uh, pretty neat in like a hospital ward. It's really weird. Um, but this is the one. Uh, that actually sold the Pink Panther uh, grab for me. So thanks for finding that one, buddy. Uh, as you can see here, it's a bulldog and it's a vintage postcard. You could just tell that from the art. Uh, this one actually dates back to 1903. So we've got an antique postcard here. I like the uh, lettering on the back uh, as well. You know, don't worry about if the stamp is like, you know, peeling off or anything like that. You know, people are purchasing it for this type of uh, display. And, you know, there's this guy coming over and you could see like the bulldogs are going to be ready to pounce on them. So uh, really cool piece. I also like to emphasize the cities in my listings. So uh, you could see here, we've got uh, Beaverton and Michigan and uh, it says Banye City. So, uh, or is that Ban? Yeah, Banye City. So I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but either way, uh, you know, people sometimes search for certain cities and even if it's something addressed uh, to a certain city or sent from a certain city, someone might think that's interesting and want to purchase it, especially if it's associated with an image that they like. So we're going to pack this one up. By the way, uh, I told you that I put these uh, in these uh, little postcard sleeves here. Uh, the link to those, as I mentioned, is down uh, in my description section, as well as the links to uh, sleeves and boards that I use to pack up my comic books. But you can see here, just goes right into the sleeve and gives it a nice layer of protection when I send it out. In terms of like little envelopes uh, that I'll use, you know, just something like this or you know, something like this, just these little mailers uh, will work just fine. And I just use my primetime sandwich technique for these. So I just put two pieces of cardboard between them just to secure them and send them out. So as you know, my rule is when one postcard sells, we've got to find another two to go up. So let's find the two replacement pieces. Okay, so we are back in postcard land. Let me show you the first one that we're gonna list. It's this vintage Christmas postcard right here. Even though it's springtime, don't worry about that. Christmas stuff sells all year round on eBay, especially if it has any kind of vintage art like this on it, uh, that really helps it out. It's unposted. It has a little pencil mark on the back with the price, but don't worry about that. You can just erase that. Uh, the next one I'm going to list, and there's actually two of them uh, that I found in that spot are these uh, vintage mobile 90 day uh, checkup cards. Some of you may remember getting these in the mail. If you remember that, let me know in the comments. It always cracks me up when people see things uh, from the past in these videos. Um, there's none of these around on eBay anymore. So I'm gonna list them one at a time, not both of them. Remember, we wanna create that sense of market scarcity. So you're the only ones who know that secret. Don't tell anyone about that. Okay, so um, they're from the 1980s, so really cool. Uh, looking forward to getting these listed. It's the cool thing about collecting postcards is you come across all sorts of themes uh, that may be related to something you're interested in. I certainly like anything related to uh, gas, uh, gasoline, and uh, petroleum products. So definitely cool right there. All right, so another sale. We've got to pull another piece of inventory here off the shelf. Uh, we're going to go down to this shelf here. I'd actually move this here. Uh, yesterday because I had some uh, additional uh, room. Some of you with uh, great memories may remember this one from the estate sale called Picking Under Pressure. That's the one uh, where I got that huge train score. I made all of my money back off of that lot purchase. This was just included in the lot, so I don't have anything into it anymore. This sold today for 25 
dollars. It's made out of a cast metal. It's hollow on the back, uh, so it has a little bit of a weight to it, but not as much as if it was a solid cast iron piece. It's one of these things that is going to take a while to sell. It needs the right person to come along and find it. I originally had it for a higher price. I don't remember what I originally started it off at, somewhere probably between $40 and $50. But once it got down to $24.99, I said to myself, at this point, I just need to set it and forget it because the price was fair, consistent with market value. So at that point, you just need to wait for that right person to come along. And that's what happened and a person just made the purchase. So take off the best offer sometimes and just leave it as buy it now. Now this is a long piece, it's 20 inches, and so whenever you're dealing with these unusually uh, shaped items, as I mentioned the other day, you have to make sure you are prepared with the proper size box. And so for that reason, I keep a secret stash of boxes right here that are unusually shaped, like these would be like long ones here. You could see you know, ones like this here. And so this will actually be perfect for this item right here. You can see it's going to fit in there real nicely, especially, you know, when I pack it up with the bubble wrap and stuff. So it's going to look good uh, over there. And uh, let's also, I looked through here before, we're going to take a, uh, a picture out again, one of these clowns. We're going to go with Pepperoni the Clown today. Who could beat a clown named Pepperoni the Clown? I mean, there's just no name. Maybe Pizza the Clown would be better, but I don't know. I think Pepperoni is even better than that. So we're going to list Pepperoni the Clown today. And then we're going to grab a, a poster down here. Uh, let's see. I'll actually go with one in here today. So let's just pick a random one out. We'll take this one. What's this say? It says Puss in Boots. I don't know. Puss in Boots? <laughs> let's see if that actually sells. Not even Daisy cares about this one. All right, well, this is the final version of the box. You can see here it is long. It's 26 inches by six inches by five inches. It's three pounds, seven ounces, but it only costs $8.20 to ship it out. Priority mail from New York to Connecticut. So don't always be scared off by those long items. You still might be able to ship it for under 10 bucks. Right, Daisy? Speaking of Daisy, will you get to work already? Come on, <laughs> we've got to pack something up, let's go. All right, so now I'm gonna tell you about a secret inside tip that significantly helps increase the chance that you're gonna be able to make the sale. And it's a, why am I bouncing like that? I don't know why I'm doing that, but anyway, it's a, it really does. It significantly increases the chance that you're going to make the sale on items just like this one. Now, what is this? This is a vintage piece of sheet music from 1905. As you can see here, it's called In the Shade of the Old Apple Tree. But that title is precisely what the problem is with this type of item. It has a title that you know, if we just go literal on it and we just type that right in and put that in our title, there's not going to be a lot of people who are searching for that. So there's not a popular keyword search term associated with it. No one's really seeking this out to blast it, you know, in their car to play it on their piano or anything like that. Now, yeah, I could write vintage sheet music in the, in the title and people do look for that, but the problem is it's a saturated category. So the chances that this is going to stick out in search is really low. So what you need to do is a little bit of research on your item and see if there's a way that you could legitimately associate it with something that does have a popular keyword that you could then put in the title. So a perfect example for this one is that this song was actually in the movie, The Wizard of Oz. For those of you Wizard of Oz fans out there, and I know there's many of you, if you go to the scene where Dorothy is walking through the woods and she picks the apples off of the trees and they get mad at her, this plays as an instrumental undertone throughout part of that scene. So in my title, I put Wizard of Oz and then in the actual description, I actually write that. So now I've brought in the whole entire area of Wizard of Oz collectors to this piece who otherwise would have never 
come to it. So it sold for 10 bucks, doesn't sound like a lot, but this comes out of a whole lot of sheet music pieces that I've sold. And uh, you know what? It would not have sold at all if I didn't use that technique. So try it out sometime and let me know if it works in the comments. And I know someone's gonna say this if I don't mention it. So yes, make sure that you are only using associations that are legitimate to your item. Do not spam the title with keywords that are not legitimately related to your item. That is against eBay's policy. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how you can make some big money using a pin button making machine. Okay, so obviously this is our pin making machine and we've got several different components uh, that we need to put into it. So what we have here is a little silver uh, piece that's gonna be the main part of the button. Now it's not real silver, just a color. Uh, then we've got the uh, pin part uh, of the pin and then we have like a little laminate that's gonna go over it. And so these come in a big bag, as you can see here. So usually they'll come in lots of like 500. And so you just you know pick from each part. And then we're obviously gonna need an image that's going to go onto the pin. And this is why I suggest not throwing out damaged uh, items that are like paper items like comic books or magazines, because what you could do is you could cut out little sections and you could make pin backs out of them that people will purchase. People will buy like four or five pin backs if you have a certain theme. You could see some things cut out here already. This is for a Doctor Who magazine. It's one of my favorite uh, TV shows. So we're gonna make a Doctor Who uh, pin here today. But you could sell like four or five, six pin backs for like $10 and they ship out real cheaply. So you need to know the diameter of the barrel here. This is a one and a half inch barrel. Now you could either go out and you could get a one and a half inch hole puncher or you could just uh, draw a one and a half inch template for yourself and just kind of keep that handy. And then what you could do is you could you know, go over things that you might want to make a pin with and just you know, get a sense of whether or not it's going to look like a cool pin like that. And then what you do is you just take a pen and you just draw a little circle around it and then you just cut out the piece. So as you can see here, this is what I'm talking about. These are some that we already cut out and then we're just going to trim around the circle there. So there's a Cyberman, you know, for example, you know, here's a, here's a Santarin. So I already uh, cut out or Miss Primetime did. We've got the, uh, the 12th Doctor here, Peter Capaldi with a Cyberman. Uh, behind it so and we even got a little piece of a dalek in there all right so the first part we're going to start with here is the actual pin piece and what you want to do is you want to get it situated so that it's the way you would want it when it came out and you're going to pin it onto yourself or pin it onto something so this is the little clip part this would depress down and pull down that way so once we get it that way we're going to push this machine over this way so you can see i pushed it over to the right and we're just gonna flip it over like that, and we're just gonna put it right in to this barrel right there, just like that. Then we're gonna slide this over. That's just getting it ready for later on. And we're gonna take this little silver piece, and we're gonna find the little ridge, and we're just gonna put this into the barrel here. So now we're gonna take whatever picture it is that we want here. So we're gonna take the doctor, and we're gonna put him right into the barrel. And then we're just gonna take this laminate piece and put it right over like that. Once we've got that done, we're gonna slide the barrel over this way. And we're gonna make sure that this little pin that you see here is towards the left. It could also turn to the right, but we don't want that now. It's basically selecting what side of the barrel we're gonna focus on. So we're gonna push that over, and then we're gonna press this down, push it down. Okay, so what that did is that took that image uh, with that part of the pin and it brought it up top. So now what we have to do is combine it with this part of the pin. So we're just gonna slide it over like this, and then we just move this little lever over like that. We push this down, and now, as you'll see, we have got our official Doctor Who pin. How cool is that? Right there, you see there, you just depress it down and you just put it on yourself just 
like that. So now I've got my own Doctor Who pin. And let me show you a couple other ones that Mrs. Primetime uh, made. These are really cool. There's Clara right there. Uh, there's one of the Zygons. Uh, there's a Cyberman one. Uh, there's another uh, Doctor Who one. There's a Weeping Angel one. And we've made some other ones as well uh, that I could also show you. So if you have old comic books, for example, that are damaged or old magazines that are damaged, you could cut out little pieces and make pinbacks out of those. As a comic book example, we had a Looney Tunes one and you could see here Mrs. Primetime made a Taz button. And then uh, she took little phrases and little quotes and stuff and made little pinbacks out of those that you could sell. Here's one from an old animal magazine and she cut uh, like a little giraffe face out of it and made that. And so again, you could sell these off in little lots or you could sell them off in big lots if you want to. So how much does something like this cost? Well, if you were to get this new on Amazon, it would run you about $112, but that also includes all of these pin back pieces here in lots of 500. So it's really not a bad investment because if you make, for example, 10 small lots of pin backs that have like five, six pins with a popular theme, then you know you could sell those 10 bucks a piece and you can make your money back pretty fast and then the rest of it is all profit. So if you're crafty and you like doing that type of stuff, you have an Etsy account, even an eBay account, Mercari, then you can make money using this type of approach. And even if you're not crafty, I am not a crafty person, but this is as easy as can be. It's just a few simple steps. All you need to know is how to use a scissor and cut things out and you're set. So, you know, if you want to try it, I do have a link to uh, one of these types of machines. It's very similar. Uh, it comes with the different uh, pin back accessories. It costs, like I said, around $112. It's an affiliate link down in the description section. Uh, it's not this exact one, but it's one that's very similar and highly rated. Okay, as you can see here, Mrs. Primetime put together three different lots of Doctor Who related pin backs. She did an amazing job. I mean, look at all these faces. These are all customized pins. Uh, just a terrific job. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to list uh, each one of these lots. So as you can see, there's 10 per lot uh, on eBay for $9.99. And we're going to uh, throw in an additional pin, like a surprise mystery pin. That's also Doctor Who related uh, for anyone who makes one of those purchases. All right, well, we got one more item that's sold that I want to show you before we wrap up the video. It's this one right here. This is the last one of my helmets that sold. You may remember this from a recent What Sold video because I showed uh, one of the other helmets that sold from the estate sale where I picked uh, this one up. This one's just pretty uh, bland and uh, generic, just says Outlaw on the back and uh, DOT stickers there. Uh, but the one that I showed in the video was the good girl, uh, bad girl one uh, on each side. It had one of those uh, uh, designations. So that was funny. Uh, that helmet kind of cracked me up. So, uh, but all of them are sold now. I don't have anything left into it in terms of expenditures because I made my money back from that sale. Uh, this one sold for $30. So it'll just go out uh, priority mail cubic rate shipping. Remember to always look into pirate ship to check if you could get cheaper rates that way. Uh, so anyway, I hope that you found the video helpful, that you got all sorts of good tips and tricks out of it. Maybe some of you will be motivated to start a pin back aspect of your business. There's so much potential that's there and so much opportunity for profit. If you're interested in any of those Dr. Who lots uh, for the pin backs, the eBay store link is down in the description section or to the top right corner uh, of my channel. So hopefully you'll check that out from time to time. I appreciate all of you and I want to give subscriber of the day to none other than Jessie Shops. She has been one of the biggest supporters of this channel and she watches every single video, no matter how short or how long it is. And as you know, it's usually been on the longer end. So thank you, Jessie Shops. Go visit her on Instagram. It's jessie.shops. I put the link to her Instagram account in the description section as well. Don't forget to come to my live show tonight, Wednesday. It's at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with digital marketing expert, Kimberly Kurt. She's gonna teach us about digital marketing, branding, and social media marketing, and how you could apply that to your reselling business. So it's gonna be a great time, fun time. I hope to see you there. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you back at the next video, everyone. Take care.